So, next thing I want to talk about is vocabularies. What, what is a vocabulary? Um, this is a definition here that's coming from the Marine Metadata Org. Um, vocabulary is a set of terms or labels, and these could be words, codes, icons, that are used in a specific community to represent concepts. So a vocabulary sets out um, the common language a discipline has agreed to use to refer to concepts of interest in that discipline. They can take many forms. They can include um, authority files, glossaries, dictionaries, gazetteers, code lists, taxonomies, subject headings, thesauri, semantic networks, and ontologies. So it depends what area you're working in. If you're in um, working with biological data, you'll probably be using taxonomies, for example. Um, there's a lot of work going on in developing vocabularies, um, so I just want to mention a couple here that um, uh, first of all is the Ocean Data Interoperability Platform, which is called ODIP. Um, it's a project that contributes to the effective sharing of data across scientific domains and international boundaries. So it includes major organisations engaged in ocean data management and these uh, organisations come from, from Europe, from the US and from Australia. Um, ODIP is also supported by IODE, who's participating in the project. And one of the project outcomes is the development and implementation of standards for common vocabularies. So that's one of their, their main objectives. Another important initiative is the NERC vocabulary server. And this is providing access to lists of standard terms for populating fields in oceanographic metadata, including descriptions of data, platforms, instruments, and geographic locations. So what's the importance of control vocabularies? So first of all, vocabularies need to be um, accepted. So a community needs to accept that term um, and then adhere to that, that particular vocabulary. They need to be defined um, in a precise way and typically this means having a, the terms with rigorous definitions. So you have a term and you have a, de a definition which is part of that vocabulary and that definition is agreed to by the community. They also need to be managed, so in general there's a body of experts that create and maintain the control vocabularies. Um, and this involves periodic review, addition of new terms, modification of terms, and occasionally deprecation of terms. If something becomes obsolete, you'll, you'll deprecate it. Um, so why do we have control vocabularies? Well, they serve several different purposes. First of all, they establish um, the permissible terms to be used. In other words, that is the list of terms that you must use to describe your data. They maintain a uh, proper and agreed upon spelling of terms. Um, they clarify terms for those who are new to the community. And they eliminate the use of arbitrary terms that can cause inconsistency and confusion. So um, if you don't have control of vocabularies, you rely on, on just spelling out words, for example. And these words could be misspelled. And that's an example there where, and it's quite easy to misspell some of these scientific words. And if, if you spell it differently than me, then we're not going to be consistent. And we try to search for something, we won't come up with the, the correct result. Um, Sometimes what they call what entity abuse, where uh, um, an instrument is defined somewhere in a parameter vocabulary. Well, it shouldn't be. There's a vocabulary for instruments, and that's where the instrument uh, type should go. So, in the past, vocabularies were managed, um, you know, by custom software, 
Sometimes they're printed on in documents and published. Um, sometimes they're read-only web pages or downloadable documents. Not very usable. However, these days vocabularies are usually um, found in uh, vocabulary services, which is a machine-to-machine -mach -machine service that supports activities such as creating, managing, and querying vocabularies. Um, there's a way of representing these vocabularies using SCOS, which is a simple knowledge organization system, which is a, a, a protocol for uh, representing vocabularies. And the, the format that's used is RDF, which is research, uh, sorry, resource de description framework. And this means that the vocabulary information can be passed between computer applications in an interoperable way. So by using SCOS, for example, um, a vocabulary service can then, you can link to that service and to the particular vocabulary you're looking at. So there's no sort of downloadable documents that you need to look up and things like that. Now I've listed here some examples of control vocabulary services. First one is the uh, CData, CDataNet control vocabularies. Um, in Australia we have the Australian Ocean Data Network and we have a number of vocabularies including there's a platform vocabulary, an organisation vocabulary. Now for example an organisation vocabulary may be specific to your country. Um, I know for example the AODN organisation vocabulary only has organisations within the country. So that may not be useful for other people to use. Whereas the CDataNet uh, vocabularies or CDataNet parameter disciplines, for example, can be used by anybody um, because they're, they're common disciplines, common uh, parameters. There's also the GCMD, the Global Change Master Directory. They have a, um, a list of science keywords uh, which are used widely Um, so how do you implement control vocabularies? There's two ways to do that. You can start with an existing vocabulary or you can build your own. And I would really recommend that you don't try to build your own. There's enough work going on within the community in developing vocabularies that you will probably find something that will meet your needs. Um, those examples that I just gave you they, they give you a lot of um, uh, vocabularies for, for different parameters, for different um, disciplines, things like that. So you don't need to. But as a last resort, if you have to develop your own, then you need to do that. So these are the steps. If you want to um, develop your own control vocabularies, um, well, first of all, this is what, no, we're talking here about implementing control vocabulary. So first of all, you choose a, a, um, a control vocabulary. There's many possible candidates out there to consider. Um, you need to find a suitable candidate, evaluate, evaluate that and decide which is the best one um, for your use. There's a, there's a guide here that's put out. I'm not sure who did that, but I, there's a link there to choosing um, oh, it's marinemetadata.org um, they've got a, a, a document there choosing a control vocabulary which is quite useful once you've chosen it you need to implement it so there's a number, way, number of ways you can do that you can um, implement it by um, creating a, a drop down menu on your, on your application um, you can use one of these vocabulary services that, are, that I talked about. Um, it's important to remember that vocabularies change over time. So if you're using somebody else's vocabulary and you're not linking directly through, through a SCOS or something like that, um, you'll need to be aware that they can change over time and you need to keep your system current. So we're going to do a, a little exercise now on vocabularies. So if we go back to
to this class activity on vocabularies. So what I want you to do is, so what we have, this exercise is going to use the CDATA net control vocabularies. These, this is a European standard uh, used in metadata and data format um, descriptions. Um, They have a, a governance group that, that maintains this, uh, these vocabularies and uh, that includes uh, within IODE we have a, a marine XML vocabulary content group called CVOX. That's part of the uh, governance of this. Uh, it's moderated by the British Oceanographic Data Centre and uh, anybody can join this, um, this governance group if you want by subscribing to the to the CVOX mail list. So if you're interested in vocabularies, that's the way of, of getting involved. So the aim of this exercise is to familiarise yourself with the different CDATA.NET control vocabularies um, and to answer some of these questions here. So first of all, let's just go and have a look at the, C, the CNET uh, vocabulary server. So you see here these are all the different types of um, vocabularies that they're using within C data net. So they, they cover things like um, C area names, platform codes, uh, parameters, seismic receiver types, bathymetric sound velocity correction codes, you name it, it's there. These these are the, the, the uh, code lists for each vocabulary down here. This is a description of it. Um, and they have a version and when it was modified. So this is the whole list here. So what I want you to do is to go through, answer some of these questions that I've got here. Find that again. Right. So using those vocabularies, you need to find the relevant vocabulary list on the CDATA.NET server to answer some of these questions. So there's seven questions there. So go through that and find out, first of all, this is the first one, is crew summary report, which is a, is a metadata report for um, research cruises. Um, so what is the port code for Nassau? The second one, which country is the port located? And what is the ID of that country? What is um, the code for the sea area around the port of Nassau? What is the vocabulary definition of Benzlos sampler, etc.? So go through those questions, find the relevant um, vocabulary on that vocabulary server and just write down what those codes are. 